set your intention every single day to become the person that you want to be so that then you can create the life that you want to. It's literally this simple. You have a very precious life that you have in a very limited amount of time and mental energy. Stop wasting it on things that do not matter. And your life will not be the same. It will be measurably different. So we're gonna go through a, certain, a few aspects of your life. And I want you to be as open, honest, and vulnerable with yourself right now. If you have a pen and paper, right now would be the best time to go grab that pen and paper. If you're driving your car, make some mental notes. Try to figure it out. Grab some pen and paper later. We're going to dive in and actually figure out where you are currently in your life. And, um, you know, if you want to throw away this piece of paper when you're done, throw it away. But that way you can at least be open, honest, and vulnerable with yourself. So we're going to go through a few aspects of your life, and I want you to give yourself a rating on a scale of one to 10. Okay, so the first one we're going to dive into is your career or your business. If you were to look at your career or your business or where you currently are in your career, and you were to look at it and rate yourself on a scale of one to 10, one being like, it is absolutely in shambles. I have no career. I'm homeless. I don't have a job. Like it, one is like really, really, really bad. 10 is, is your career is perfect. It can't get any better. You can't make any more money. You can't have any more impact in the world. You can't get any promotions, any of that stuff. If you were to look at yourself and rate your career on a scale of one to 10, what would you rate yourself? Think about it. Your career, you know, how long you've been there, how long you want to stay. If you're close to an next promotion, whatever it is on a scale of one to 10, what would you rate yourself? Go ahead and write that number down. Next thing is your relationships. Okay, this can be your romantic relationships. This can be your friendships. This can be your business. This could be your network. This can be the top five people that you spend the most time with. This can be your mentors. This can be every single other breathing human that you have a relationship with. If you were to look at it on a scale of one to 10, one being like, you have no friends, nobody loves you, they never have, you don't have anybody on your phone, you have nobody on your friends list on Facebook, that would be a one. A 10 would be like, there is absolutely no way that any of my relationships could ever improve. So on a scale of one to 10, what would you rate your relationships? Go ahead and write that number down. Okay, next one, intellectual. When we're looking at yourself intellectually, this could be the reading that you've been doing lately, all of the learning courses that you've been taking, the conferences or events that you've been going to, the podcasts that you've been listening to, the YouTube stations that you've been learning from, intellectually, how you've been growing over the past couple months on a scale of one to 10, one being like, this podcast that you're listening to right now is the very first one you've ever listened to. You haven't been learning, you haven't been growing, you've been terrible. You've never read a book before, all of those things. 10 being like, there is absolutely no way on God's green earth that I can improve intellectually. I am perfect. I know everything that there ever has been on the entire world. On a scale of one to 10, what would you rate yourself intellectually? Okay, write that down. Next one, your physical body. When you look at your physical body, on a scale of one to 10, would you rate yourself? So this is your, your body, how you feel, how much you work out, the type of food that you eat, if you're sore throughout the day, if you have any joint issues, how you sleep, all of that stuff is considered your physical body. What would you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 with your physical body? One being like, it's terrible, you need a, uh, you know, a crane to pick you up and, and to be able to get you out of the house maybe and you've never eaten healthy food in your entire life and maybe you've never worked out, maybe you uh, don't eat well, Maybe you feel like crap, you sleep like crap, all of that stuff. 10 being, you have the most perfect body that anyone has ever seen. You might as well just put it in statues because there will never be a better body than yours. And it's perfect, right? That would be your physical. So on a scale of one to 10, what would you rate yourself physically? Next one, emotional state. How do you feel throughout the day? Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you anxious? How do you talk to yourself? How do you feel and, and think? Are you positive? Are you negative? On a scale of one to 10, what would you rate yourself emotionally? One would be like you're a complete, absolute emotional wreck. 10 being you are the most perfect emotional being that has ever existed on this planet. What would you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 emotionally? And then last but not least is spiritually. For you, this could be church, this could be religion, this could be spirituality, this could be yoga, this could be meditation, this could be temple, this could be ashram, this could be whatever it is that you believe in. Spiritually is just the growth of feeling like you're growing as a human outside of just your intellectual knowledge, your well-being, all of that stuff is in there. On a scale of one to 10, what would you rate yourself spiritually? Now, what we just went through is a super simple process and I call it Cripes. I've made this up. It's C-R-I-P-E-S, Cripes, C-R-I-P-E-S. Now you can do this with yourself 
every single week. It takes maybe four minutes, you know, like four minutes to go through this entire thing. And what you're doing is you're getting a pretty good lay of the land as to how you've been over the past week. And here's what you wanna do. You wanna take all of those numbers, and for those of you guys that wrote all of this down, you take all of those numbers and you add them up. Get your phone, get your calculator, whatever it is, what number do you come to? You add it up and then you divide it by six. And that's gonna show you your average score. You, you might come up with like a 6.35, right? You come up with a 6.35. All you have to do is move that decimal over to the, to the right one spot. So if it's a 6.35, you'd move it over one spot and that would be a 63.5. That is the score that you've given yourself on your life. And you've been honest with yourself. Now here's the first thing. Before you go any further, I'm gonna preface this and say this. Don't look at this number or look at any of these numbers or where you are currently in your life and start to get emotional about it. You have to look at it very objectively as if you're just looking at a grade and you're grading a test from somebody else. That's all that you have to do. And you have to look at it and say, how can I improve this? Because that's what we're gonna talk about next. And you have to realize this. Let me just show you, I don't know how it is outside of America because I've never taken any classes outside of America, but from 90 to 100, is an A, from 80 to 89 is a B, from 70 to 79 is a C, from 60 to 69 is a D, and then from 59 and below is, 59 and lower than that is an F, right? So if we go back to my score of 6.35, if that was what I had, and I move the decimal to the right one place, that would give me a 63.5%. So if I'm looking as to if I were to give myself a grade on how my life has been, Right there, I gave myself a D. Now I might look at that and be like, oh my God, my life is in shambles, it's a D, all of this stuff. No, 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 once again, look at it objectively and say, okay, now let me figure out how I can improve this. I'm looking at it objectively as if it's just a test grade that somebody else that I'm scoring, and I'm gonna look at it as objectively as possible and I'm gonna see how I can improve it. Now, immediately when people see these numbers, the first time I usually take somebody through this process, they're like, oh my gosh, how do I get to an A? I need to get to an A as soon as possible. I'm not worried about you getting to an A. I'm literally just worried about you going one test grade up. That's all I'm worried about. So in this case, if I were to have a D, how do I get myself to a C? I'm gonna look at every single one of these things that I just went over, and I'm gonna see how I can improve myself over the next 30 days in each category by one point, right? So this is super simple, follow with me now. We're gonna look at every single one of these categories, and we're gonna figure out how we can improve each of them by one point. My career, I'm gonna ask myself a simple question. How could I raise this score, whatever it is that I wrote down over to the side, by one point? Let's say I rated myself a seven in my career. What would I need to do over the next 30 days to raise this number to an eight? There's a certain people I can connect with. Is there a couple deals that I need to close? Uh, do I need to make myself more valuable to the company? Do I need to go close another sale? Do I need to start, you know, I have my own business and I need to, to hire somebody. What would take my career from a seven to an eight. We'll just raise it one point in the next 30 days. Now I've got my hit list of what I need to do to improve my career over the next 30 days. I've got a laser focus that I've got to get on this now. Okay, I know where I am. I know where I'm going. Now all I've got to do is execute. Perfect. Boom, this is easy, isn't it? <coughs> Excuse me, now let's go to relationships. Now we look at relationships, I'm like coughing on my own, choking on my own spit over here. <laughs> We're looking at relationships. And we're going into relationships. Let's say I relate my relationships of six. How, what do I need to do to raise my relationships from a six to a seven over the next 30 days? All right, maybe I need to take my girlfriend on a date every single Friday. Maybe I need to connect with my mom more than once a week or you know, FaceTime her every other day. Or maybe I need to hang out with my boys and you know, just do guy stuff. Maybe I need to do whatever it is I need to do. Maybe I need to change my top five. I've been hanging out to me and negative people, whatever it is. I'm looking at my relationships and I'm asking myself, what do I need to do to improve this score by one point over the next 30 days? And then I just write my answers down. So what are the answers for you? You can pause me if you want to, and you can literally start working through this right now. Now you've got your hit list of exactly what you need to do over the next 30 days, right? Let's go to the next one, intellectually. When I'm looking at my intellectual, let's say my intellectual is a five. Okay, what do I need to do to raise this intellectual score from a five to a six over the next 30 days? Now, you know what I need to do? I need to make it a practice to wake up every single morning and to read 10 pages. There's also, you know, somebody that I've been following on YouTube and I need to start watching more of his stuff because I feel like I learn a lot more about whatever it is, neurobiology, because that's what I've been wanting to learn about, right? What do I need to do over the next 30 days to raise my intellectual score from a five 
to a six. Write all the answers down. Pause me if you need to. Now you've got a hit list of everything that you need to do. So you know what you need to do over the next 30 days to improve it. Let's go to physical body. Let's say my physical body is at a seven. What do you need to do to raise it from a seven to an eight? What do you need to do as far as your sleep? As far as how you feel? Do you need to stretch more? Do you need to eat healthier food? Eat more salads? Eat more protein? Work out? Instead of two times a week, I need to work out four times a week. What do you need to do over the next 30 days to improve your physical score from whatever it is you wrote down, from a seven to an eight? Now you've got a hit list of everything that you need to do for your physical body. All right, what about my emotional state? Let's say I rated my emotional state a six. What do I need to do to raise my emotional, raise my emotional state from a six to a seven? I need to, I need to spend less time around my friends who are negative. I need to stop myself in the middle of anxious thoughts so that I can pull myself out of those anxious thoughts and I can start to think about something that I'm grateful for, right? What do you need to do to raise your emotional score by one point? Pause me if you need to, write it down. Let's come up with a plan. And last but not least, spiritually. Spiritually just feels like I'm growing myself and growing my spirituality, whether that's my religion, whether that's yoga, whether that's meditation, whether that's breath work, being more in tune with my body, just sitting in silence more. I don't know what, whatever it is for you. What, is, what does that mean to you, spirituality? A real good thing that I'll tell you about spirituality that might actually help a lot of you guys. I did an event not long ago and it was just my team members. And we were talking about spirituality and, and you know, what they would rate themselves on a scale of one to 10. So we went through this process and one of my team members said, what do you mean by spirituality? Like, I'm really confused. And this is the, the, the answer that I gave him. I said, the most spiritual person I've ever met is a guy named Radhanath Swami. And Radhanath Swami is a teacher. He was actually Jay Shetty's guru. Jay Shetty's a friend of mine. He invented me, he invited me to an event. You know, he came up to me after Jay did and he's like, hey, did you meet Radhanath Swami yet? I was like, no, there's so many people here. Like, I don't wanna, there's this long line of people. He's like, all right, well, you know, once everything ends, just let me know and you can come over and talk to him. Came over and talked to him and I've never been with another person who was more present it was like the nothing in the entire world existed except for me when he was in this conversation with me. And he was kind and he was loving and he was sweet and he was spoke very slow and intentional. And it was just like, you could tell that this person's done more work on himself than any person I've ever met by far. And it wasn't a, anything that was like a show that was being put on for me. And you could tell like there's nothing that I could do that would ever make this guy judge me. He would just see me as I am as this being that's behind and trying to improve and trying to get better. So the being behind the Rob dial, right? And I said, when you think of someone like that, whether you've met someone like that or not, what qualities do they have that you would want in yourself? Kind, love, whatever it is that, that's in there, that can be spirituality for you. So it can literally be characteristic traits as well in your spirituality of the person that you want to become. When you look at yourself spiritu spiritually, what would you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10? And then what would you need to do? So let's say you have a, a four. What would you need to do to raise it from a four to a five? You know what? I need to meditate for five minutes a day. I need to notice when I start to get angry and I need to start doing some breathing, some slow, intentional breathing to slow myself down. Well, now what you do is if you look at this piece of paper, if you went through this exercise with me, you know your score of where you're at and you now have a game plan for the next 30 days of how to improve yourself in your career, how to improve yourself in your relationships, how to improve yourself intellectually, how to improve yourself physically, how to improve yourself emotionally, and how to improve yourself spiritually. All you need to do every single day is wake up, look at this piece of paper, if you went through this practice with me, look at this piece of paper, and then make sure that you're executing on everything that you said that you need to execute with. Set your intention every single day to become the person that you want to be so that then you can create the life that you want to. It's literally this simple. This is something that you should do with yourself every single week to see how you're doing. You look back and see how you did. You look forward to see how you can improve what you need to continue doing. And it's that simple. And if you do this simple practice of cripes, I promise you, these six areas of your life, if you look at them every single day and, con and go through and take time with yourself every single week, you will see massive improvements in your life. There's a phrase that says, what is tracked will improve and what is tracked and written down will improve exponentially. When you track these things, when you write them down, all areas of your life, the career, relationships, the intellectual, the physical, the emotional, and the spiritual, if you're tracking them and you're being potential every single day, they will improve exponentially simply because you're tracking yourself and you've got a game plan of where you're going to go. One thing I would recommend that you do, if possible, get a pen and paper, write these down. And then when we're done, all you have to do is literally answer those questions and start to go through them and see if you can start to get some really deep answers for these questions. 
So I'm going to ask these questions and I'm going to kind of frame them for you. You can write them down. You can pause me if you need to, and then force yourself to answer them and to not allow yourself to be surface level, but to allow yourself to go deeper than you normally would to find answers that might be hidden inside of you that are looking to be uncovered throughout this process. The first question that I want you to ask yourself is this, who am I spending time with? So there's a, fr a phrase, a quote that says, show me who you spend time with and I will tell you who you are. Show me who you spend time with and I'll tell you who you are. I don't even need to know who you are, see you or anything, but if you were to show me the top five people that you spend the most time with, the top 10 people who you spend the most time with, and I were to look at them, talk to them, interview them, all of that stuff, I could get a pretty good idea of who you are where you are in your life, what you're doing well with, what you're struggling with, but also what direction you're heading in your life as well. It's like you've heard me say many times, the five people that you spend the most time with, you average them together, you're going to become those people. If you spend time with five alcoholics, you're probably going to be the sixth alcoholic. If you spend time with five millionaires, you're probably gonna spend, you're probably gonna become the sixth millionaire. And so that's why if you look at people who are, you know, if you look at the people that you spend the most time with, there's a pretty good chance you put them all together. You uh, think the same way as them. You are heading the same direction as them. Your body is probably very similar to them. If you hang out with, you know, if you're overweight and you just start hanging out around five people who are extremely fit, you are going to start to become more fit. Now you might not be as fit of the people who are extremely fit, but you will become more fit simply from being around them and they are going to hold you to a higher standard. You know, they're not going to be eating things that you're eating in order to get you to where you are. And you're going to start changing your habits. And when you're around people that are taking care of themselves and you see that they're waking up earlier and you see that they're focused on their business or you see that they're focused on their mindset or you see that they're focused on the relationship with their spouse or they're focused on the relationship with their children showing up as the best parent, you are going to see what they're doing and you are going to become like them. And so the first question is, who am I spending time with? Is to start thinking about who are the people around me that are helping me become better? Who are the people that are keeping me in the exact same position? And who are the people that could possibly be making me actually worse? And so there's three different categories that I just talked about. There's the people that are gonna make you better, there's the people that are gonna make you worse, and the people that are going to keep you exactly the same as you currently are. When you look at these people, and you start to see who you're spending time with, you ask yourself who you're spending time with, also ask yourself the question, where are these people headed in their life? Like what direction are they headed? If you look at the trajectory of their life and what direction they're going into, and you're saying, okay, my good friend, John, that I spend a lot of time with, and I look at where he's going in his life, and I fast forward in my mind where John could be in five years, is that where I also want to be in five years? Or am I looking at that going, yeah, he's not heading in a direction that I wanna be. Well, if he's not heading in a direction that you want to be, maybe it's time to, you don't have to get rid of him, as I always say, just spend a little bit less time with him and maybe put a new person into your top five. I'm not saying you have to get rid of people, but just start to be very aware of the people that you spend time with and where they are helping you head and in what direction you're headed to. You know, so if you have a massive success, you have something amazing happening, happening at work. Are these people celebrating your success? Are they rooting you on? Or is there a part of you that's like, mm, I'm not really sure if they're happy about my success or if they're just being fake or if they're, being, if, they're, if they're indifferent to my success. A really good friend should be somebody who celebrates your success and is happy about your success as you are. That's what you're really looking for in these types of people. So are they heading in the same direction as you or are they heading in the direction that you want to be heading? That's the first question. Who am I spending time with? Question number two, which is a big question to ask yourself, is, is this something that I have control over? And so when you look at things that are possibly uh, stressing you out, making you anxious, that you're worrying about maybe a little bit too much, ask yourself the question, is this something that I have control over? Because so much of what we go through in our lives, we don't have control over. We don't have control over the majority of the things in our life. We don't have the control over anybody else. Uh, we don't have control over the weather. And if you wanna talk about you know, control over other people, and I'll give you a really good example of this. I was running a Zoom earlier today uh, for about 93 people. And these are all people who I'm you know, helping them grow their coaching businesses. I'm teaching them how to grow a coaching business in my business breakthrough program. And I'm teaching them this. And uh, you know, there were quite a few people who showed up late. 
not massively late, but like one or two minutes late. Like they were a few minutes late, five minutes late, seven minutes late. And I started exactly on time and I said, hey, would it be, and I, I didn't preface this in any sort of way for them, but I said to them, you know, would it be um, kind of irresponsible and unacceptable if you're expecting me to start this live at 12 Eastern and I showed up at 12.07 consistently? Would you guys see that as unacceptable? Let me know in the chat. Flooded in, every single person like, yes, 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 that would be unacceptable. And then I said, why is it unacceptable for me to show up late? but many of you showed up a few minutes late. And so you have to be willing to hold yourself accountable for when you're showing up. But you also have to realize that you have no control over what time other people show up, how other people act, um, how they're going to show up whenever they get there, when they show up, all of that stuff. And I always give the example, if you have kids or you know children and you're around a two-year-old, the last thing that a two-year-old wants to do is be controlled. And so you have to realize it is really hard to control other people. So what is it that you can control? Those are the things that I want you to focus on. Stop focusing on what you can't control and start focusing on what you can control. So things that you can control, you can control your own mindset. It might feel like sometimes you can't control your own mindset, but you are fully 100% in control of your mindset. You're in control of your attitude. You're in control of the way that you talk to yourself. You're in control of your energy throughout the day. You're in control of your actions throughout the day. You're in control of your happiness. Those are things that you can control. So the important thing is to ask yourself, is this something that I can control? Is this something I can control over? And if it is a no, it is something that you should let go of and release and stop worrying about. Because if you're stressing over something that you can't control, you're going to stay stressed forever, forever, if you're trying to control that thing. Because if you have no control over it, what will make you stress out more than trying to control something that you can't control? So don't waste your time, your money, your energy, none of those things on things that you cannot control. Only focus on what you can control because those are the things that are going to move the needle in your life. So that's question number two is, do I have control over this? Question number three, which is a very important question that I would wake up and ask yourself each morning for the next week, two weeks, and just see what comes up. What does my ideal day look like? What does my ideal day look like? I had this practice that one of my mentors years ago had me go through, it's called the Perfect Tuesday, and where he had us sit down and design what our Perfect Tuesday would look like from every single moment, from the second we woke up to the second we went to bed. And the reason why is because Tuesdays are just normal days, they're just days. It's not like a Friday where you're excited for the weekend, it's not a Monday where you're like, oh, the weekend, I'm, I'm still kind of you know, hungover from the weekend. Tuesdays are just Tuesdays. They're not even the middle of the week. They don't even get a special name like Wednesday gets hump day. You know, it's not, uh, you know, Thursday where Thursday's Friday Eve and then Friday you have Friday. So it's like Tuesday's just a normal day most of the time. What do you want your perfect Tuesday to look like? What do you want your ideal day to look like? When you wake up, what time do you want to wake up? Where do you want to wake up? What do you want your morning routine to look like? Do you want to wake up in the morning? What do you want to eat? Who do you want to spend your time with? What do you want to do in your business or in the job that you have or the career that you have or the children that you spend time with? You know, what do you want to do in all of the morning? Plan out your entire morning and what you want that to look like. And then you start to shift into the noon to afternoon time. What do you want that to look like? What do you want to be eating? Do you want to be eating with other people? Who are those people that you want to be eating with? Like, what do you want this ideal day to look like? What do you want the afternoon to look like? What do you want the evening to look like? Dinner, what type of dinner do you want to have? What type of food do you want to be eating? Who do you want to be eating dinner with? After dinner, what do you want that to look like? Do you want to be spending time with your family, with the f cell phone away, with Netflix away, with the iPads away, with all of that? Do you want to spend time with just your family? Do you not have a family yet? Maybe you want to spend your time on your own personal growth or building your business. What does your ideal day look like? If you don't know what your ideal day look looks like, it's going to be really hard to build into that ideal day. And so the third question that will help you grow is what do I want my ideal day to look like? Question number four is what am I missing out on by choosing to worry or be afraid? What am I missing out on by choosing to worry or be afraid? Notice I use the word choosing because worrying and being afraid is a choice. It might not always feel like a choice, but if you're worrying, you're allowing yourself. You are choosing to stay in that state. You are choosing, whether you realize it or not, to focus on those things that are causing you worry. And if you've been listening to me long enough, you realize the statistics, I say it all the time. Psychologists found that about 85% of the stuff that you worry about never even actually happens. 85% of what you worry about never happens. So if you're focusing on those things, 
That means 85% of the stuff that you spend your energy, your mental and physical energy worrying about never actually happens. Imagine what could happen if you replaced that mental energy that you have been choosing to work and, and waste on just worrying and being afraid and whatever it is that you're focusing on. Imagine if you took those things that don't happen and you were to focus on things that you do have control over that you can do and stop wasting your energy and your mental capacity on those things that you have no control over. So what am I choosing to worry about or to be afraid of? That's question number four. Once again, you can pause me at any time. Just go for it. Just start asking yourself these questions if your brain's already starting to go. Question number five is what is the most important thing in my life? One of the things that I found with a lot of people is that they don't have a whole lot of focus as to what their most important things are. So if you can identify what the most important thing in your life is, you can build a life around that. So for some of you listening, it might be your family. It might be your children. It might be your, uh, your brother, sister, your parents. It might be your spouse. It might be your boyfriend, girlfriend. What is, what is the most important thing in your life? And what do you want to build around that most important thing in your life? For some of you, it might be family. For some of you, it might be your happiness. Okay, what do I need to do to build a life around that happiness and to create more happiness in my life? For some of you guys, it might be love. Like love might be the most important thing for you. Even if you're just single, love might be the most important thing. Well, do I have friends that I can love on more? Do I, can I love on myself more? Can I make loving on myself the most important thing? that I do. If I'm single, I have nobody that I live with, I might live in a different city or a different state than my entire family. Can I focus on loving myself if love is the most important thing? So you start to build a life focusing around what the most important thing is to you so that the most important thing grows and gets better because what you focus on, you will get more of. What you appreciate, appreciates. Okay. It might be your freedom. Your freedom might feel like the most important thing to be able to free, be free and to travel and to, you know, build your own business so that you can go around the world and do some work from Bali and go to Tulum and do all of those things. Your freedom might be the most important thing. Well, how can I focus on the most important? Number one, identify what the most important thing is. And then number two, focus on that thing and how I can make that thing much better than it already is. This needs to be your North star in your life. And what I mean by North Star is that if I'm heading towards the North Star, you're heading in that direction no matter what. So if I'm like, hey, this is the, the number one thing in my life, I'm heading towards that direction of this North Star and everything that I do at all points in time, the, the, uh, we, it might have to move and shift and there might be detours and there might be, you know, a path might change a little bit, but the actual direction of where I'm heading never changes. So that becomes your North Star. What is your North Star in your life? You have to know what your North Star is. You have to know what you're standing for. Because if you don't stand for anything, you're going to fall. If you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. And so you have to know what that most important thing is. And then number six, another question to ask yourself often is, will I remember this in five years? You know, the majority of the things that stress you out right now, that have been stressing you out today, that have stressed you out yesterday, the day before that, you're not going to remember any of this. You're really not going to. And so you ask yourself, will I remember this in five years? One of my very first mentors used to always say this to me. He used to always say, if I won't remember it in five years, I don't spend more than five minutes thinking about it. I don't spend more than five minutes worrying about it, stressing out, whatever it is. Life, hey, life is up and down. It's crazy. It's all over the place. It's beautiful. It's tragic. It's, it's a lot of different things. And so if it's something that you won't remember in five years, don't spend more than five minutes freaking out about it. But if you want to, if something stressful comes up, if you get bad news, give yourself five minutes if you want to. You can scream, you can throw things, you can throw pillows, you can break things. Whatever it is that you want to do, you give yourself five minutes to freak the hell out about that thing. After that five minutes is up, you know, set a timer on your, your phone. After that five minutes is up, you move on and you go on and you do something different with your life and you stop worrying about the things that don't matter. And you go, all right, if I'm not going to remember this conversation with this person that said this thing that I didn't enjoy in five years, I'm not going to spend more than five minutes on this thing. Because if it's not going to be remembered in five years, is it really even worth the five minutes in the first place? And so the question is, will I remember this in the next five years? If you can't remember it, if it doesn't seem like something that's going to be 
you know, a big life-changing event that you're going to remember in five years, spending more than five minutes is a waste of your time. It's a waste of your energy. You don't get time back. You don't get the energy back throughout the day. So focus on, all right, I'm going to give myself five minutes to freak out about this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start focusing on those things that are the most important to me. I have grieved this relationship or this friendship or this person that just said this to me or this you know, fire that I have to put out at work. I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to freak out for five minutes and then I'm going to get moving. I'm not going to spend the next day, two days, week, five weeks freaking out about this thing. There are some people today, right now, possibly even listening to this episode that are still pissed off about something that happened to them 10 years ago. What a waste. You have a very precious life that you have in a very limited amount of time and mental energy. Stop wasting it on things that do not matter. And if you won't remember it in five years, it does not matter that much. I'm going to talk to you about a secret to success. And it is extremely simple, but it is also for most people very difficult to do. It's not really hard to do. We just make it way more difficult than it needs to be. But even though it's super simple, it is extremely, extremely important for the success that you're trying to build for yourself, for your family, for the world, the impact that you want to do. And I'm going to teach you uh, a little bit of how Jerry Seinfeld, the comedian, actually used this technique to be one of the greatest comedians and the wealthiest comedian that has ever lived by using this thing called the Law of 100. So I call it the Law of 100. I don't know if there's another name for it. I just made it up as a Law of 100. And it's very simple. The first thing that you need to do is you need to decide what it is that you need to do. So what I mean by that, if you're like, oh, I want to lose weight. Okay. Well, decide the one most important thing that you need to do to lose weight. Maybe it's work out. Uh, maybe it is eat healthier. Maybe it is stop drinking alcohol. Maybe it is stop drinking soda. Stop your intake of sugar. Find out the, you know, figure out what it is that you want to do. And then figure out what the very most important thing that you need to do in order to get there. Don't figure out the three, four, five things and try to be an overachiever. Figure out the one thing, one thing and one thing only that you need to do to get yourself there. So that's step number one. You know, in the the way that, that I think about it is this. It could be an action in your business. It could be an action in your relationships. It could be an action that you need to take in your weight loss, in your gaining muscle. It could be one action that you need. That's all it is. It's just one action that you need to do. And you're going to do that thing for 100 days in a row. So it's very simple. It's two steps. So I'm going to break it down with you. We're going to go much more in depth, why this works, how to make it easier, but it's literally two steps. Okay. Number one, decide what that action is. That's it. What is that action? So think about it right now. What is it that you want to achieve in your life? And what is one action that you can do to help you get there? If you're saying, Hey, you know what? I want to make a hundred thousand dollars this year. And in order to do that, I know I need to make a hundred phone calls a day. That's just what I need to do. Looking at my numbers, looking at my closing ratio, looking at the amount of people who pick up when I call, all of that. All I need to do is make 100 phone calls every single day. So that is the action that's going to get us closest to the desi desired result that we want. So step number one is to decide what that action is. And step number two is to do it every single day for 100 days. So you might be out there and saying, oh my gosh, but... I don't know if I, if I want to lose weight and I need to go to the gym, is it okay for me to work out hundred days in a row? Yes. It's okay for you to work out hundred days in a row. Change what your workout is. Do cardio one day, do weightlifting one day, do uh, yoga one day, whatever it is that you need to do. You can do hot yoga, whatever it is you need to do, do some form of working out for 100 days straight. So step number one, decide what the action is. Step number two, do it every single day for 100 days. The reason why is because when you decide I'm going to do this 100 days, you take out all of the room that you allow yourself to give you the BS excuses as to why you can't do it or your self-limiting beliefs. All of those things, the excuses and the self-limiting beliefs are still going to come up. But when you have made a commitment and your word is worth everything. So if you make a commitment and you don't follow through on it, that is your fault. That is your giving up on something. So when you decide, it allows you to get past the self-limiting beliefs. It allows you to get past the, the, the excuses, the self-sabotage. You just decide, I don't give a damn what happens to me. If I get hit by a truck, I'm going to do this thing every single day for the next 100 days. And let me tell you a few reasons why this is important for you. First thing is this, successful people, whatever success means to you, the thing that I've come to realize about success is it's not really that hard. We make it much more, more harder than it needs to be, much harder than it needs to be. Successful people are just consistent. That's it. They're just consistent. And we could take success in any way. If you could look at somebody who's wealthy, if that's what success means to you, 
They worked really hard consistently and they just didn't give up. Simple. Did they have struggles and challenges come up, up along the way? Absolutely. But they worked really hard consistently and they became wealthy. Now, you might look at somebody and say, okay, well, my definition of success is somebody who is extremely calm and centered and is an amazing person, right? That might be your definition of success. Okay. Well, there's a pretty good chance that that person has meditated every single day or developed something that they need to and done it every single day so that therefore they can be more calm. They can be more centered. So if, if success to you is joy and peace and happiness and all of that stuff, you can 100% create those things, but you have to realize that you need to be consistent with whatever that is. You might say, well, success to me right now and what I'm trying to work on for this year and the upcoming year and whatever it is, the next six months is being in incredible shape. Okay, well, a quote unquote successful person and, and someone that's in incredible shape, they worked out. They stayed consistent with their workout plan. They stayed consistent with their, their dieting. They stayed consistent with their water intake. They stayed consistent with not having so much sugar, having uh, less alcohol. They stayed consistent. The number one thing that I see among successful people is they're not the smartest people in the world. They don't come from money all of the time. In fact, just in case you guys wanna know, in the United States, uh, out of all of the millionaires that exist in the United States, only 20% uh, of them come from money, which means 80% of them don't come from anything. And so you can't say, oh yeah, but they came from money and I didn't have any money and my family was broke. You have to realize it's just about being consistent. It's showing up and it's working towards the thing that you need to get. It's just the consistent daily action. Success comes from consistency. Let me say that again. Let me get it into your brain. Success comes from consistency, whatever that success is. Even if you wanna be an incredible parent, okay, well, I want you to spend an hour a day, undivided attention with your children every single night, put your phone away, turn the TV off, that's gonna make you a better parent. Maybe that's what success means to you. So you have to figure out what the success is that you want. You have to figure out the number one action needs to be taken and you need to do it every single day. This is it, step number one. Decide what the action is. Step number two, do it every single day for 100 days. Success comes from consistency. You don't fail until you give up. That's it. Failure comes from giving up. And so you've got to think about that. But let me explain to you why this is important as your brain is in your brain just so you have an idea. Imagine your brain is like a forest, right? And I'll explain to you what this means. Eventually what happens over time, I'm 35 years old. I have 35 years of habits and things that I've done over the years. I have neural pathways in my brain that are strong that I've done over and over and over and over again. Those habits I've done over and over again. A habit is just something that my brain has turned on to autopilot so that it makes it easier for me to consistently do over and over and over again. So we have habits that are good. We also have habits that are bad and we want to get rid of those habits. And so when you think about that, you start to ask yourself the question, okay, if I don't have the habit that I want to, to create the life that I want, I need to create that habit of working out every single day, of spending an hour with my children every single day, of meditating every single day, whatever it is that that action is for you. And it usually takes anywhere between 21 to 100 days to rewire a habit or to wire a habit into your brain. And so if you think of your brain as a big giant forest, your habits are kind of like the pathway that has been carved in the forest by going down it over and over and over again. You know when you walk a pathway every single day, every single day, every single day, every single day, it starts to get rid of all the plants and the weeds and everything around it because you've been stepping in that. That's what a habit is in your brain in the forest. Creating a new habit and doing this every single day for 100 days is literally the idea of walking into the forest with a machete and then just hacking a brand new pathway, hacking a brand new place inside of this, inside of your brain. So whether that's the working out habit, whether that's the spending time with your children habit, whether it's the meditation habit, whatever it is, you're literally taking a machete and hacking that new thing into your brain. That's what we're trying to do here. That's how we turn it into a habit. Now, how did Seinfeld use this? Well, Seinfeld's actually famous for doing something that they've now coined the Seinfeld calendar. And what he would do is what he realized when he was a new comedian, he needed to work at his craft every single day. And so he made himself write jokes every single day. Like there was not rain or shine, nothing got in his way. He wrote jokes every single day. And he had a calendar that was up on the wall. And it was one of the calendars and every single day was on it. And he had a red pen that was attached to that calendar and he would, you know, it was just dangling from it. And when he would finish his jokes that he had written for the day, he would walk up to that calendar and he would put a big red X on the day, which means that he completed his task for the day. And so how can you use this to your advantage? The thing that he said is that once he started and he, he could consistently see a bunch of red X's, 
he didn't want to break the cycle. He literally, it literally drove him to go up and do more jokes and more jokes because he was able to see all of the red X's. And he's like, well, I don't, want to, I don't want today to be the day that I break it. And so he continued to keep it going. And so one thing you could do is you could say, hey, I want to do this for 100 days straight. Let me mark off my calendar. Here's day one, okay, today. Here's 100 days from today. And my, my goal, my commitment is that I'm going to put a red X every single day for doing this thing that, that I'm gonna be doing for the next 100 days. That's it. He ended up doing this and he did it for thousands of days. It was like years and years and years that he went writing jokes, writing jokes, and writing jokes. So when you look at him and you're like, well, he's one of the most successful comedians ever. He's also the wealthiest comedian ever. Maybe it's because of the fact that he was so freaking consistent when he was trying to master his craft that he became better than everyone else because of the fact that he was so, so consistent. Success is not hard. Success is so simple, we just make it hard. It's just wake up and do the right things every single day. Wake up, do the right things every single day and do it consistently and then just don't give up. And eventually you're going to succeed at whatever it is that you want. Like I said, the most successful people that I know, they're not the smartest people. They don't know everything in the world. They're not the, the most well-read people. They're just really damn consistent at doing the right things every single day. And so it comes down to your hard work and your dedication more than anything else. You know, if you were to look at it and you were to say, all right, I'm gonna do this for a hundred days. Imagine what would happen if you did this for the next year. Imagine what would happen if you do it for a hundred days and then doing it for a hundred days motivates you to keep going and you go for an entire year. Imagine where you could be a year from today if you took that action every day for the next 365 days. Your life could be completely different. Now, what if you fast forwarded three years? where could your life be? If you said, you know what? Success in my business is the thing that I'm working at more than anything else. I'm going to put a hundred days into working hard in my business doing X, Y, Z, because that's, what's going to get my business the furthest. And then you did that every single day for a hundred days and then a year and then three years. Imagine where your life could be. If you fast forwarded three years from today, knowing that you did that thing every single day. Like if I told you, think about this, for instance, if I told you, Hey, you know what? If you do something every single day for the next three years, I'm gonna pay you $5 million. Guaranteed, absolutely, would you go for it if you are 100% guaranteed to succeed? I'm like, hey, just do it every single day for three years and I'll give you $5 million in cash. Would you do it? Is the answer yes or no? Answer it out loud to yourself. It's probably yes, right? I'll give you $5 million if you do this thing every single day for the next three years. You're guaranteed success. Now, you have to think about this. I can't guarantee that whatever that thing is that you want, you're gonna have in three years, but I can guarantee you if you don't stop, you will eventually get that thing that you want. So if acquiring $5 million was the thing that you wanted, I can't guarantee you that if you take the right action, you're gonna get it literally in three years. But if you're taking the right action to make that money, you will eventually make the $5 million. It could be less than three years. It could be more than, than three years. But success is pretty much guaranteed when you take the right action. Success is pretty much guaranteed when you take the right action. If you're not taking the right action, it's gonna be a lot hot, harder, you know? And, and just don't stop. What, where could you be in your life if you didn't give up years ago on that thing that was really important to you? How many of you listening right now have given up on something that was really important to you four years ago? You know, that side business that you wanted and it wasn't bringing in as much money as you wanted to, so you, you shut it down. Where could you be if you just never shut it down? How different could your life be if you did not shut that business down four years ago and you have continued to, to struggle and mess things up and figure it out and get a little bit better and struggle and mess things up and figure it out and get a little bit better? Where could you be now if you didn't give up four years ago? If you didn't give up seven years ago? If you didn't give up 17 years ago, where could your life be right now? A completely different place. I don't say that because I want to bring you down. I say it because I want to put your life in a perspective. You now know that if you hadn't given up, your life would be in a completely different place. Well, now let's take the, the knowledge that we have from the past, let's bring it into our present and then use it for our future. Why don't I decide what it is that I want and then just decide that I'm not going to give up. I'm going to go for 100 days. And then hopefully at the end of those 100 days, I'm motivated to keep going. And I'm gonna create a new habit in my brain. Think about where your life could be. It could be a completely different place than it currently is. Sometimes we have a little bit of a struggle building a business, whatever it is we're trying to do. And we're like, you know what? Maybe this isn't for me. Maybe it's just the universe saying, hey, Rob, this isn't the right thing. Try something else. 
When in reality, that's just our ego. That's just that little voice inside of our head, that little bitch inside of our head saying, oh, give up, man, stay where you are. Hey, give up, stay where you are. Hey, you, you know, no, you don't need to, you don't need to go and be a success. You're probably not good enough or smart enough or any of those things. And what happens is we talk ourselves out of the thing that's going to be the most fulfilling for us. Imagine if you didn't give up where you would be. Now, imagine where you could be if you started today. Imagine where you could be if you started today and you said, I'm just going to give up. How many times have you given up on yourself in your life? One, two, five, 10, 20 times maybe? What if you just decided, I'm going to go full force of this thing for the next three years? And if it doesn't work after three years, then I can give it up. But I have no other options. There is no reason to have a plan B because it distracts from plan A, as Will Smith says. But I'm going to succeed at this thing no matter what. I'm going to give myself three years, not not 45 days, not two months of running a business, not six months of running a business. I'm going to go for the next three years. I'm dedicated my life to three years in building this business. Where could your life be in three years? If you had that sort of mindset, if you didn't give yourself a back door, a way to get out, you said, you know, if you said the, the, the one of my favorite lines from the great philosopher of a guy named Marshall Mathers, Eminem, success is my only mother option, failure is not. What if you had that thought in your head that success is your only option for this, failure is not. Because you only fail when you give up. So if you just don't give up, you'll eventually figure it out. You'll acquire the skills, the knowledge, the tool belt to do what needs to be done to succeed at whatever it is. So what if you had that mindset? The way that you start it is by dedicating the next 100 days. The law of 100. I'm going to stick to this thing. I know what my desired outcome is. Step number one, figure out what the action is. Step number two, don't give up. Just go for the next 100 days. If you want to start a brand new life, figure out that action is. Decide today that this is the first day of the rest of your life and do not stop for the next 100 days. And if it makes you feel better and it makes you more excited, get a calendar, put a red X on it and make sure that you stay consistent for the next 100 days. See how much different your life is 100 days from today and then see how much different your life is a year from today, and your life will not be the same. It will be measurably different three years from today than it is right now. Just don't give up on yourself. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. There are some people today, right now, possibly even listening to this episode, that are still pissed off about something that happened to them 10 years ago. What a waste.